Welcome back to another Zwift Racing League Recon for chasing the sun route in Macquarie Islands. This is a points race covering 35 kilometers and a massive five point segment spread across this route. Four sprints and one dirty climb. Let's get in to this week's recon. So yes, we're back again to Mercury Islands and indeed back for another race around the Chasing the Sun route. It was around this time last year, in fact, when we raced here for ZRL and we're back again. I think that's okay. This is a good course and has something for everyone. For this recon, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna focus on the recon notes, the segments, the power-ups, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through the whole course with some voiceovers as usual. I do see less opportunity now for bike changes given the reduction in rowing resistance on the gravel climb, which makes it less likely for bike swapping unless you are specifically chasing FTS and in some of the lower categories maybe, but even then I think it's less likely the right option than ever before, but you can make that call. Okay, so in terms of bike choice, I think this is a focus-based decision. If you're going for FAL, and finish line points in later segments. And of course, those points at the finish then I think an all-round machine could be the right option. If you're going for sprint segments, then an aero is the choice. And debatably, maybe an aero machine is the choice anyway for this route, given the fact we may see an easing of the pace in between sprint segments in some categories until we get to the temple climb. Then the race is certainly going to hot up and break up. So basically, if you're unsure, go for an all-rounder. If you have the Zwift Tron bike, then simply choose that. Also, related to this is you are going to be picking up a steamroller power-up on the country sprint banner that you can use on that temple climb. Okay, so let's look at these power-ups because as mentioned, the power-ups are specific to each banner and then the following segment. I have to say, I do like this new power-up system, which has been in place this season. So here are the power-ups listed on the right-hand side of the course notes, and you can see how they relate to the following segment. Now, I will say, I did double check with Zwift HQ and Martin from the WTRL, and they assure me that no power-up is gonna be given at the lap banner, which we go through a kilometer 28.1 before we head back to Neokyo. So if you do pick one up, then don't blame me. At the alley sprint, you're going to collect an aero which can be used on the upcoming railway sprint. At the railway sprint, you're gonna collect a feather which can be used on the rooftop reverse climb. At the top of the rooftop climb, you collect a draft which can be used on the country sprint. Just remember though, it's not the full rooftop segments, so there are no points through that rooftop banner. On the country sprint, you are going to get that steamroller to use on the Temple KQOM, which could be make or break for some people on this segment. And it will be interesting to see where people drop the power up to make those attacks. At the top of the Temple climb, it's an aero which should be used in that final sprint segment on the tower sprint and then it's a burrito which you could potentially use on that finishing sprint or even before that final sprint if you want to try that long break for the line. Potentially, if teams have a few riders left in that front group, that could work really well. Sending a rider straight over the top after the tower sprint with that burrito. So that's the power-ups and don't forget those recon notes as always are available over on the community pages of levelvelo.cc. Just before we get into the pens, don't forget, like, subscribe, leave your comments, your feedback or even just your emojis down in that comment section below. You know what to do by now. There was literally only two of us in this race, so I used it to confirm the race distances and re-record this route footage. Again, I'm gonna focus on the segments and speed up on those transition sections. So we leave the pens and within 700 meters, we will be hitting the first sprint segment, which is the alley sprint. Remember, it's a long one at 480 meters and some teams will likely try and push the pace after the segment also, if they have the numbers to try and reduce and cause some early disruption. It's 
It's then onto the railway sprint, another super long one, 640 meters. This one is visible from far out and often catches people out when they go too early. Timing is everything on this one for both FTS and first across the line points. After the sprint, we then head to tackling the rooftop reverse climb. As mentioned, this is not a segment as we don't go through the start of the official climb. It's around two kilometers long and draggy, but it's draftable climb. And again, teams and riders will likely push the pace here in most categories. Thankfully, you do pick up that draft power up at the top of the climb at that banner. It's then down and heading out of Neokio towards the countryside. The country sprint next comes at kilometer 17.1, short and punchy this one at just 113 meters. Remember, after this sprint, the road gets a little grippy and draggy for around two kilometers as you head towards that Temple KQOM. Again, riders with good FTPs will be pushing the pace through this section even before we get to that climb proper. It's then on to the infamous Temple Climb. If you do choose to bike swap, do it before the official start marker on the floor. The climb starts at 21.1, finishes at 23.6, so it's 2.5 kilometers of climbing on this dirt. That's anywhere between five to eight minutes of climbing. Aero power up at the top. We then descend on the dirt and keep descending past the castle area before heading through the tunnel back to Neokyo for this final sprint segment and then that finishing sprint for the line. So this is the tricky bit. You have the tower sprint at kilometer 32.4. This is 320 meters and then another two kilometers later is the sprint for the finish. So again, almost back to back sprints to finish off this grueling and grippy course. But then, it's done. The final points race of the season, 23-24, and just the team time trial to finish the season. So, as mentioned, a technical course with plenty to plan and consider, especially with those power-ups. Don't forget to use those recon notes. Like, subscribe, leave your comments down below, and we'll see you next week for the final recon of this season.